Good morning, I'm Chris Bryant. I'm the Director of Music here at Atlanta First, and I wanna welcome you to our virtual worship today. And before we get started, we do have a couple of announcements. Um, Disciple Fast Track for Winter 2021 is here. Um, that will be taught by our pastor, Pastor Jasmine, and this class will meet on Tuesday evenings from 7 to 8.30 via Zoom, and that starts on January the 12th. Um, please send an email if you're interested in joining this class to grow at Atlanta First UMC to sign up for the Zoom link. Also, we are still participating in Keep Atlanta Warm. Um, you can, so we're still taking donations for hats, scarves, gloves, socks, blankets, hand warmers, and backpacks. Um, you can mail your donations to the church, and there's a um, mailbox address that is located in your bulletin as well. Um, please don't forget, every Sunday we have our worship at 11 a.m. virtually, and we have virtual Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday via Zoom, and that is taught by Pastor Jasmine. Also on Tuesday evenings at 6.30, that is our virtual time for prayer. So please plug in with us during the week um, where you see fit and what times um, are, and the times that are available to you that also fit your schedule. All right, let us join together for the affirmation of faith that is found on the screen or in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascendeth into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now let us join together as we sing our hymn of praise, We Three Kings. The lyrics are on the screen or printed on page three of your bulletin.
Will you pray with me? Almighty God, you search our hearts and you see every part of us. All our desires are known to you and from you no secrets are hidden. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, cleanse our hearts so that we may perfectly love you and glorify your name. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, beloved, I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught all of his disciples to pray, entitled The Lord's Prayer, which you will find on your screens. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us continue in worship as the choir sings, Jesus, what a wonderful child.
comes the time in our service where we give back to God, what he has given us. Um, your gifts will allow all of us to worship, serve, grow, and engage the city of Atlanta during this time and to keep the ministries of this church going, even though we are not physically meeting together on Sunday mornings. You can give several different ways. As you see on the screen, you can give online at atlantafirstumc.org slash give. You can give through cash app, text to give, or you can mail your donation and your offering to the church um, on the, to the mailing address listed on the screen. Please give generously during this time. Everything that you give will go back to supporting the ministries of this church and helping those in need. Let us prepare our hearts for the sermon as the Atlanta First Chancel Choir sings Roland Carter's arrangement of Mary Had a Baby.
you to think about a question for a moment. What would you most want to see before you die? Some might say that they'd like to see themselves become famous and maybe you wish to see your family prosper or become economically secure. And others, others might like to see a specific geographical location, someplace that you hope that you'd like to visit one day. Or perhaps you'd like to see your child or your children or even your grandchildren grow up to be healthy and strong, wise, faithful adults. We'd love to see our loved ones become strong in the faith. Some would be happy just to see the Falcons win the Super Bowl. Our answers to this question say a lot about who we are and about what we prioritize, about our goals, our values, what we think is important in life. In the scripture this morning from Luke's gospel, you'll find an old man, Simeon, who's very fortunate in that he gets to see what he wants to see before he dies. He's been living for this. He's been desiring this. And God has assured Simeon that he would see God's Messiah before he dies. The hope of all Israel, the thing that people have been waiting for for so long. Simeon has been given this promise. And Simeon trusted God, and now Simeon is allowed to see the unfolding of God's promise, not only for God's people, but the unfolding of the promise for Simeon himself. Luke tells us, Simeon is righteous and devout, and the Spirit has led him into the temple on this particular morning, when Mary and Joseph, eight days after Jesus' birth, bring Jesus to be dedicated in the temple to God. Now, as Simeon looks up from his place in the temple, he watches as this young couple enters in with their baby. And Simeon realizes that he is looking upon the face of salvation, the face of the Messiah, what he's waited for. Such a view is where his hope has been lying all these years. I'd like for you to listen to Luke's account of the story as it's written in the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning with verse 22. This is the word of God for the people of God as it comes to us this day. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. 
guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Would you pray for me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O oh God, our strength and our salvation. Reach each of those who are seeking this day the comfort of the knowledge of your presence with them. Touch each of us with your words this morning, this time. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Imagine what that must have been like for both Simeon and Anna to have been praying and fasting and hoping and wanting to see this thing, to experience this thing. And then on that day, it happens. Imagine what you would feel like to finally be able to experience your bucket list, the thing you have been focusing on for so long. Luke tells us that Simeon was led to the temple that day by the Holy Spirit, but he also says that every day Anna has been showing up there at the temple. It's basically where she's been living. Both of them have been intently waiting on the coming of the Messiah. This moment is sacred for them. This place is sacred. What must that be like? Some of you may not have to imagine it. And maybe you've already experienced such a moment. Maybe God has already blessed you with being able to experience much of your bucket list. Simeon was pleased and relieved. You can almost hear his relief as he thanks God for allowing him now to rest because God's word has been revealed. God's promise has happened. And every time I've heard or read this story, I've thought about how fortunate Simeon is. But lately I've begun to realize Simeon only gets to see the beginning of this promise. And it's true, it's what he's been hoping for, but we're blessed in that we can look at it from the other side and recognize the impact that this promise has made. But many of us can probably relate to Simeon because we would like very much to see Jesus when he returns to the world. We celebrate at Christmas time, the coming of the Christ into the world, and we remember his promise to come again soon. So it's understandable that we would reflect, especially this time of year, on our own wishes to see Jesus' second coming 
It's part of what we've been focusing on during Advent. So it's understandable that even at Christmas, we think about that coming of Christ today into the world or soon into the world. We can relate to Simeon's desire because it's our desire too. As we witness more and more what some people call a moral downfall of our civilization, we find ourselves especially looking forward to the time when God will ultimately be glorified and so much sickness and immorality will be a thing of the past. As you turn on the news and as you witness the hurt and the pain, the abuse and disregard for the poor and of children, as you witness the neglect of the world and the unbalanced priorities, can you also feel some of that same need that Simeon felt? Can you connect with him? Can, can you empathize with what he was seeing and thinking and feeling and saying? There have been many instances this year alone when I have prayed, come Lord Jesus soon into this world of difficulty, into this dark place. I can understand Simeon's desire to see God's glory. Simeon watched his own country become overrun by outsiders. The Roman Empire had taken over a, a people who cared nothing for his God nor his ways, but who forced their own rules and policies and moralities, their own politics on God's people. Today, we watch as injustice and immorality also hold sway and how they become the norm in the world. We see the violence. We hear the cry of the fearful and the anguish of the needy. We, we know the uncertainty of the lost. We feel for them. And sometimes we feel like we're helpless in helping them. So can you understand Simeon's desire now? It's a desire much like our own today. Yet through all of the changes and struggles of his day, Simeon has proven hopeful and waiting. He's hopeful because God has promised him. And he's waiting because he knows that God keeps God's promises. And there is where he's faithful. And so, as Simeon waits, He's drawn to the temple and Christmas comes for Simeon on this day. Simeon's waiting has ended and he recognizes the Christ and he knows now that salvation is here. He doesn't have to see its outcome. He knows it's here. The kingdom of God is at hand and he's satisfied. Simeon is at peace. But what about our waiting? What does the fact that Jesus has come and brought salvation to the world mean to we, a people who still experience the threats of war and starvation, the loss of values and morality? Because there's still struggle in the world. And though Simeon no longer has to wait, he can rest you and I find ourselves waiting here in the temple, wherever we are, for the Messiah to finally come and make things right. We're tired of the news and the struggle of bringing God's kingdom, and we still wait for the final glory of God. Don't we? Don't you? Don't you find yourselves wondering and waiting still? Well, people, Luke's gospel is telling us that like Simeon, it is time to celebrate the coming of the Christ into this world. This good news, this answer to Simeon's bucket list isn't just something that's only given to this old man on this day. You don't need to be envious of Simeon because the salvation that Simeon saw in the temple on that day is the same salvation that you and I and all of the world 
can experience now and every day. That's the good news. That's the glory of what it is that Simeon is, is proclaiming here. He's excited because he knows that from then on, this salvation is going to be something that all of the world gets to experience. This is the good news of the gospel that Luke is sharing. This isn't old history. It's the current story. Now, granted, Simeon is not saying that all is well now and that our problems are no longer existing. In fact, I want you to notice here in Luke, it's, it's old Simeon himself who warns the Holy Family and warns all of us that this salvation that he witnesses will not be without great cost and trial. Simeon says Jesus' coming is going to throw the people into all sorts of turmoil. In fact, Mary herself will find her own heart pierced with pain. I think it's interesting. The one to whom the angel greeted as having favor with God, the one who will bear the Christ into the world, the one whom God favors to be the bearer of God's presence is going to find pain and sadness and grief and sorrow. It's going to pierce her own soul, Simeon says. And that's because salvation is not easy. And it's not something that comes without price. Christmas brings with it the coming of Christ. And anytime the Christ comes into our lives, we are faced with a decision, a crossroads, a crisis. And sometimes that's a difficult decision and a hard crisis to live through. But like Simeon, our waiting is over because we can witness the Christ and we can know that he is at work in the world. Simeon's hope and expectation wasn't for the world's problems to be over. He knew they would continue. And he knew that for some they would be worse. Rather, Simeon's hope is in the recognition of Jesus, the Messiah. His hope is in the, the certainty that the world would find salvation. His hope, the sheer joy for Simeon and Anna, each, is that they, ex they are excited about seeing the Christ. The good news is the fact that God is with us. That's where their hope lies. Emmanuel, God with us. That's what the word means. And it's such an appropriate word, and it's such an appropriate name for Jesus. Such a word offers hope for a dark world in a dark time. Emmanuel. There is hope. God is with us. Such a wonder of God's presence with us is the hope that you and I can hold on to even as we encounter persecution, even as we recognize injustice in the world. Emmanuel is a hope because we know God has kept the promise. Like Simeon, we are able to look at the result of God's coming, the way that this salvation affects us, even in the midst of hard times, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God doesn't leave us. Emmanuel is hope because we know God cares and loves us so much that God became human to live among us. God has decided to, to move into our lives and to walk alongside us, to experience the pain and the hardship and the injustice and the persecution. God is with us. Emmanuel is hope because God's love and actions in Jesus have proven to you and to me and to all people everywhere the extent that God would go through to love us to show us God's love, to be so vulnerable as to come as a baby. That's love. To be willing to be so vulnerable to come as a baby and to remain vulnerable to a people who were intent on eventually killing him on a cross. That is showing love. Simeon glorified God because he recognized God's salvation in this child would mean the salvation for all of the world, not just one group of people. A salvation because we believe. 
because we recognize the hope. Emmanuel is hope because we know that God is with us, that Christ is with us, even as we struggle with crisis after crisis, and even as we know pain and defeat. Because Christ is with us, we no longer need to wait for him to arrive. Now, as much as any time, we are called to act with Christ in the bringing in of God's glory. Now is not the time to wait in the temple or wait in our churches or wait at the altar or wait hidden away in our home, looking out a window as Simeon and Anna did. I don't fault them for that. They were waiting for the coming. Now he has come. Now is the time to be used by him. We must allow Christ to act in the world through us. That's what it means to be the body of Christ. To allow Jesus to be present in the world through us is what it means each time we, as a group of believers in the faith, seek out the lost or the sick, the lonely, and those who suffer injustice. And we work to serve them in the name of Christ. And there are plenty of opportunities for that. Plenty of ways that God reveals to us how we can be the hands and the feet and the voice and the sight and the recognition of Christ to the world. In this scripture today, Mary and Joseph bring Jesus to the temple to dedicate their firstborn male to God. And while doing that, they discover again and again that God will use him for the salvation of the entire world. It's a message they've heard before from the angels, each of them, from the, from the shepherds in the field as Jesus was born, and now from Simeon and Anna. Certainly, we prepare for Jesus to come again. That's the continued promise of God, and in such, we still, like Simeon, find hope. But don't let your waiting be an idle wait. It's no longer the time to sit hopefully waiting for Jesus to, to walk through the door. Search for ways that you can point to the Christ being present in the world now. Encounter Jesus across the table as you serve others in a soup kitchen. Teach a Sunday school class or a Bible study or a small group and let God teach others through you. Volunteer as caregivers and visitors in hospitals or to shut-ins. Become a voice of welcome and gratitude for those visiting your church. Bring the light of the good news of God's love to those who walk in darkness, to those who hunger to know such love, to those who are waiting all their lives, like Simeon, to encounter the love of God. There are people who are waiting, who are certain that God is promising them the sight of the Christ at some time, the sight of light. Help them to see that, that it has entered the world. Then when we recognize God is with us and when we allow God to use us, we show the promise and the hope of Emmanuel to a darkened world, to a world that is hunger, hungry for such goodness. God transforms the world through each of us. God's glory is shown. And those who wait will be shown how God's promise has been fulfilled. Make yourself available for God to use in showing others the Christ. Would you pray with me? God, take our hands and use them. Take our eyes and help us to see opportunities, opportunities for showing others the entrance of the Christ into this world. Take our mouths, God, and, and speak through them. Take our ears and help us hear the cries of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Take our hearts, God, and set them on fire 
for your love. A love which is full of passion for this world. Give us that same heart that we might hold such passion for all whom you put in our path this day and always. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Will you pray with me? Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy upon us, that with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive now this benediction. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Go in peace. <laughs>